Hi there, sewers. Today we're going to be walking you through how to use our wonderful digital products. We'll start with how to access your account. On our website's homepage, up in the top right corner, we have these three little icons. Right to left, we have your shopping cart, the search bar, and then your account page. Click on that one. If you're not already signed in, it will take you to a login screen. Type in your email here and your password here then click sign in. If you don't have an account with us yet, you'll click create account, put in your first and last name, the email you want to use, and create a password, then click create. Now you have a children's corner account. So you can go back to the login page, either by hitting the account icon at the top or the account tab here and log in. Remember, your account is registered under your email address, not your name, so make sure you're always using the same email to sign in. Once you're logged in, you'll see your account page. It has a few different features. Here you can add your mailing address, so we'll know where to send your goodies when you place an order. Down here is your order history, where you can see everything you've purchased from us online or in store. Say I bought some thread for a project, but I realized later that I didn't get enough. I can find my order here, find what color I bought, and reorder it. Lastly, this is the tab for your digital library. This is where you can access all of the videos and PDF patterns that you've purchased from us. So if I want a refresher on picture smocking, I'll click on this Learn to Smock video I have here. Now I can watch the video. and download the instructions. If I want to download a bishop pattern, I just click the link and download the file. It's important to note that this won't open the file, only download it to your computer. When you buy one of our digital patterns, we give you five downloads. We do this to ensure our customers are the only ones accessing the pattern. Once you've downloaded that pattern five times, the download link will no longer work. So make sure when you go to open up one of your digital patterns that you're doing it from your computer's downloads folder and not re-downloading the file from your digital library. But don't worry, if you use up all of your downloads by accident, it's not the end of the world. We'll be happy to reset it for you. At Children's Corner, we use the most commonly used reader program for our digital patterns called Adobe Acrobat Reader. This is a free program that is easy to download and to use. While this program is available on smartphones and iPads, the Layers feature used for our patterns is not compatible with these devices, so we recommend using your personal computer to download your patterns. If you don't have Acrobat Reader downloaded already, just go to your web browser and search for Adobe Acrobat Reader Download. The first link should take you to this page, where you'll click Download Acrobat Reader. Then go to your computer's downloads folder. If you're on a Mac computer, go to Finder at the bottom of the screen. If you're on a Windows computer, go to File Explorer. In either application, there should be a folder on the left called Downloads. Click on that. You should see a file called Reader Install Setup. Double click on it to open it. This will start the download for Adobe Acrobat Reader. It may take a few minutes. Once it's finished downloading, make sure the box next to Launch Adobe Acrobat Reader is checked and click Finish. A window will pop up asking you if you want to open all of your PDFs with this program. That's up to you but all Children's Corner digital patterns need to be opened with Adobe Reader in order to print properly. Now that Adobe Reader is set up, we can open up a pattern. For this example, I'm going to use that Bishop pattern I downloaded earlier in the video. Normally, when you download a file, it will go to your Downloads folder. If for some reason you can't find it there, you can type the name of the file in this search bar and find it that way. I would recommend keeping all of your digital patterns in a separate folder for easy access. Once you've found your pattern, right click on the file and there should be an option that says open with. Hover over that and click Adobe Acrobat. If you have Adobe Acrobat set as your default PDF program, you can just double click on the file to open it. 
There are a few different formats you can print your pattern in. We offer an 8.5 by 11 inch format that allows you to print your pattern on your home printer. We also offer an AO format and a 36 inch format that can each be printed at your local print shop or at a site like pdfplotting.com. This bishop pattern, like many of our patterns now, is layered. That means you can print out only the size that you want rather than printing all of the sizes stacked together. Each of our digital patterns include detailed instructions explaining how to use a layered pattern. These are the instructions that I'm going to walk you through now. After you've downloaded the pattern and opened it in Adobe Reader, click the layers icon on the right hand side. It looks like a couple stacked sheets of paper. If you have an older version of Adobe Reader, the layers icon may be on the left side rather than the right. Clicking the icon should pop out a menu. Click the drop down arrow next to the pattern name to see the list of layers. You'll notice the first two layers both say leave on. That means these layers have to stay on no matter what size you're printing. Leave on borders has the symbols that help you put the pattern together once printed. Leave on text has the labels for the pattern pieces. So leave both of those on. Now say you want to make a size three. You're just gonna click the little eyeballs next to each layer that is not the size three or the two leave on layers. You can see as I do that, all of those layers are disappearing and now only the size three and our two leave on layers are showing. So if the layer has an eyeball next to it, that layer will show up when you print. When you have your layers the way you want them, you're ready to print. Click the print icon. On the newest version of Adobe Reader, it will be in the top right, but if you have an older version, it may be on the left. Clicking the print icon will open up a menu. Choose what printer you want to use. Make sure the actual size is selected instead of fit or shrink so your pattern prints at the correct scale. Make sure it's set to auto rather than portrait or landscape. Then you're going to put in what pages you want to print. We recommend before printing your full pattern that you print out the first pattern page on its own. That way you can measure this one inch square and make sure your pattern is printing to scale. On page four of the instructions, there's an index that tells you what pages to print for what pieces. So if you want to print a size three view a bishop with angel sleeves, you need to print pages 17 through 25 and 26 through 37 for the dress front and back, pages 38 and 41 for the angel sleeve and bias band, and pages 19 and 22 for the neckband. Once your pattern is all printed, all that's left is to assemble it. On page four of the instructions, you'll find a diagram to help you with putting your pattern together. It shows you how to lay out the pages you've printed to form the pattern pieces you need. The first step is to trim the edges off of the pages. You can do this however you like, but what we normally do is trim the right side and the bottom of each page. That way we can tape our pages together left to right, top to bottom. We're still using the size three bishop for this example, so I'm going to start by putting together pages 17 and 18 of the dress front and back piece. Page 18 is going to slide under page 17 a little bit. Now you want both halves of this spool in the middle to line up just right. The same with these letters at the top and bottom of the pages. A should go with A and E with E. After these two pages are together, I'll connect pages 18 and 19 in the same way. Looking at the diagram, I can see I need pages 20 through 22 for the next row. So I'll lay those out. and use these spools and letters to line them up. I usually tape over each spool
then put one piece of tape over this circle of letters in the middle of the four pages. And there's your finished pattern piece. Repeat this process to assemble the rest of your pattern pieces and you'll be ready to sew in no time. Visit our blog, cornerstitch.com, for more children's corner sewing tips, free sew-along videos, and shop the look ideas. Visit our online store at childrenscornerstore.com for all current children's corner patterns, fabrics, notions, and more.